And what's up, everyone? How you guys like the new intro from Ripple River, man? Great stuff. His audio is perfect. Let me tell you. Oh, boy, do we got a show today. Hollywood's going to get medieval. <laughs> Uh, no, anyway, I'm going to be doing a test run on what I am going to be doing on the radio. We usually premiere everything uh, about Biker News at about 8 a.m. I'm thinking the morning show is going to be starting at 9 a.m. And this is all central time. So if you're on the East Coast, it's 10. West Coast, well, I feel sorry for you. You're probably still sleeping. Uh, but maybe 9 a.m. is good for you guys. Maybe. <laughs> it's funny. My kid got me this lighter, man. Uh, freaking uh, wrench thing. I'm sitting here playing with it. Uh, but anyway... I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff on that new show. It's not going to be in the same format that you're hearing now. And, you know, and right now we're on iTunes, Spotify, every damn where. Uh, that is our wheelhouse's radio. Uh, contrary to what some people think that we're a YouTube platform or Facebook. Now, we just record the show that way you guys know what's going on in the background. You to see some of the stuff I do during the show. All that good stuff. But we're going to be talking about a lot of issue-based stuff. Uh, a lot of other type of events going on. Hardcore thoughts, because I'm not censored on my own radio station. <laughs> Unlike some of these platforms. And no, I have not decided if we will stream it live on YouTube or Facebook, any of that stuff. As of right now, it's going to be real easy. All you have to do is get an, uh, an app. It's free. Download it on your phone and you to listen uh, 24 hours a day if you want. But I figure 9 a.m. that way after the premiere of this show, we'll just slide right into the other one. And I'm looking at probably a 15 and 3 type of deal. Uh, meaning, you know, I'll talk about, you know, stuff for about 15 minutes and then go to three songs. Uh, we're going to be a hard rock, uh, classic rock, blues, you know, biker music over on the radio man that's gonna be going 24 hours a day uh we're also gonna have uh cory he's working on a show right now uh it's not biker based man you're gonna have sports you're gonna have uh other stuff like hunting fishing all that kind of stuff on his show so we're really getting it uh down and together i believe black dragon's gonna be on so but that's my thoughts on the platform that i'm gonna do is maybe 15 minutes of discussion or you know 10 and then you know four it all depends on you know it takes time to get a show in a, a groove so that's what's going to be happening over on Motorcycle Madhouse Radio. Real excited. A lot of work, man. A lot of work goes into that stuff to keep it going. Uh, in the licensing fees, my God. They're crazy. <laughs> but, hey, you got to pay the piper if you want to, you know, start a radio station. We're going to have a whole mix of stuff in today's show. Again, I wanted to try some new stuff, give you a kind of... Uh, direction that a show would take with me we're gonna have harley news of course and then uh some issues some bad ones going on around in the country so this is kind of like a test one a demo one as Corey graff would say no i'm not going to be playing the music because i'm not going through all the bs of loading my certificates up for licensing and all that stuff plus that's not what this is about but it, it's going to give you ideal give you an ideal uh, first thing I want to talk about here in the opening, I said earlier, we're a radio show. We're not out there shooting cute little videos, talking about this and talking about that going on in the scene as far as protocol or, you know, what you should do with this or I need to hold your hand at that because you don't know how to go out there by yourselves and, uh, do what you got to do to join a motorcycle club. No, we're a radio show. Uh, we do primarily on this show, Biker News. Yes, Biker News. That means that if people are in the news, that's their problem. We just present it. Give some opinion pieces. That, that's what we do. My and then with the viewpoints and stuff like hey, you know what by the way, I got a hater channel. I feel so awesome 
My God, you know you're making it when you get haters. <laughs> the schluck won't even show his face. Then to find out, he goes, cheers. You're from Australia, are you? My God. I even got haters in Australia. I guess they don't like the way I talk about them over there. But hey, I, you know, again, I'm not the one over there acting gangster and stuff. Can't blame me. Can't blame me. Uh, but... I do the radio stuff with the biker news and go off on other topics because the biker scene is broken down in different sets here. You got a white set, of course. You got the black set. You got the mixed set. You got the Hispanic set. And everybody's real different. For example, on the white set, you don't see one percenters giving talks about protocol online you just won't you won't see how can i say you won't see a hell's angel out there you won't see a bandito mongo any of them out there giving protocol advice they just don't do that that's not what the set does uh then you got the black set of course and it's a little different it, it, it kind of it was fascinating to me because you know i learned something you got to remember with the white set there's a lot of that old school stuff that you especially oh yeah a lot of old school stuff man where a lot of clubs won't even let a black man walk through the door still like that to today man in chicago but it was fascinating just talking to bd of how the black set runs because i got a lot of questions i like learning and i brought up a conversation to bd i was like man What's with it? Why is a lot of clubs and one percenter clubs in the black scene, why do they accept cops or people that work for law enforcement? It's very known that this happens. There's a lot of clubs that do it. It's like a, you know, maybe an East Coast thing. I don't know. Because I asked him that question. And he made a very damn good point. He's like, well, that's really the only thing available to a lot of people is correction officers or, you know, town police officers, stuff like that. And I, it kicked me in the head. I was like, you know what? You're right. You know, personally, I wouldn't or a white set wouldn't do that. But when that's the only employment available to you, well, you know, maybe that reasoning's good. And he said black people look on that type of stuff a lot different than white people do. See, you learn something new every day. You know, personally, I can't see a one percenter club uh, taking cops in. But, hey, that's their culture. That's the way they work it. You'll never see that. Uh, stuff going on most of the time in the white set i'm not saying it doesn't i'm just saying you know most of the time it's frowned upon uh but that was good stuff bd i really appreciated uh learning that stuff so the sets do different things like i said you know certain things you do not do in the white set you're not going to get out on youtube talk about this talk about that you're not going to show your club affiliation on the internet. You're just not going to do it. You know, for those that are claiming to be white set and uh, if they got a station, which most of them I haven't seen, uh, you know, I don't see any of them uh, that are doing that, but they're not going to get out there and show you their affiliations. They're not going to show you their club because there's always been the belief is you keep that stuff separate from what you're doing. That's the best way I would explain it. Now, the mixed clubs, uh, you know, the black set, yeah, there's no problem. They, That's the way they do things. If they want to show off their clubs, that's on them. <laughs> if they want to say, well, I do this and I do that, well, that's on them. It's, you know, that's the way they run their show. They want their club name to be out there, and they want their club name to ride with, Whatever that presenter's saying. That's why, again, we're going to go back to the other end. That's why a lot of guys won't show you their club affiliations in the white set. Because then all of a sudden you're talking for the whole club. When you get on there and say, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, uh, and all that jive. 
Additionally, and this is where the sticky thing is, when they talk about protocol, okay, if you're in a mix, or say a black, or say a Hispanic, that's a lot different than what white boys do. They don't do half, you know, half the stuff that I've been hearing, and I'm not bashing other channels, but I'm just saying, half the stuff and the way they think, that does not happen in the white set. Not at freaking all. There might be, you know, some similar stuff, but bylaws are different, the way people act are different, the way they do things are different than say a mix club would do. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying there's a whole different ball game between these sets. And that's what a lot of people who talk about that stuff do not tell people. And I'm not just talking about, well, it's local. <laughs> yeah, it's local, but it's also dependent on what you set you're in and how things work. You know, because I always said, you know, I'd hear some stuff. And I was like, man, in the Midwest, that never go on. Everything's different. That's why I don't understand why a lot of people just don't get out there and talk to people. Man, there's a million freaking runs. Out. Well, there used to be it's until COVID. But there used to be a lot of runs. And most of the time, clubs are there. So why not just go up, introduce yourself? You know, you don't have to say, hey, um, so I want to join your club. No, get to know the freaking people. You know, eventually, hey, they'll, you know, you'll see them at another run or you'll see them at another bar. And you start getting, you know, close for you to talk to them. It, you know, I'd have to say 95% of the stuff that are said on some of these protocol channels ain't gonna help you do nothing it ain't gonna get you in the door it ain't gonna get you to where you make it through a prospect period it ain't gonna make it to where you're a successful member that's only gonna happen when you go out in the streets and talk to the people you to talk about the culture all you want and when you do talk about the culture put it down straight man this ain't all roses and ice creams out on the street with clubs so why try to make people think it is? It ain't. It isn't. It's not all that it's, you know. You just look at the biker news. And I can guarantee you we're only covering a small smidget of a sandstone, baby. A lot more is out there that's not covered. I wouldn't have enough time in the day to cover a lot of the stuff that's in the news. So that being said... There's a lot more that goes on. So you're not getting the whole picture when you're watching some of this stuff. The only way you're going to do it again is to get out there. Get out rallies, man. Uh, Sturges. You know how many big freaking clubs go to Sturges if you showed up there? Well, if you want to get involved in a club or meet club guys, most well, stay away from the bars. Go around where they're hanging. Introduce yourself. You know, see how it goes. Does some of the stuff that some of these channels talk about happen? They're decent, some of them. Some of them, it's like, oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> Again, you don't you know, distinguish between the cultures. You just throw it all in the one pot. And that's what, uh, that's why I don't like talking about protocol. Because whatever you say is a lot different somewhere else. And even in your own you know how can i say it region it's really different so why you want to you know i get it you want to talk about the culture all that crap uh trust me i've been around since the 90s i've seen some hardcore shit uh a lot of stuff that uh many of these people haven't and it's like really man i was like five years that's it six years that's all you've been a member and it's like damn whatever man <laughs> you guys want to be uh, experts go for it i ain't even an expert a lot of stuff uh changes with time if you will so you know i just wanted to bring that up there's a lot of different things going on in the culture and i actually feel sorry for some people i really do uh 
if you got to go to the internet to try to learn something or get out there and ride your bike by yourself, I guess I would have to say, because, you know, most of the time, I kind of lost my train of thought there because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, well, why do people go to that? But anyway, you know, the internet can be a good thing if you're looking for somebody to ride with, I guess. If you don't know anybody, you just got a bike, you want to get out and meet people. But it's not the place to learn about uh, clubs. I'm sorry, it just isn't. Because you're not, you're not gonna. You know, you're gonna... Go based on other people's experiences that is not going to apply to you. I guess that's the best way I can sum up uh, this segment. And one of the things, if you notice with my segments, I'll usually do an opening. We'll go over to Biker News, and then we'll go into the closing. Now, as far, because I know some uh, punks out there complain about it. Uh, well, you know, you're reading the uh, po article. That's one of the hater channels. I love it. Uh, you know what? I love hater channels because they just send them. They send people all over the place into the. They get you subscribers, and I was like, "Damn, I didn't even have to work for that." It's pretty funny. Anyway, the reason why you see it on YouTube and Facebook and video platforms is because I'm recording a radio show. You schlucks for freaking Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. We're on every single major radio platform. Every one. That is what we are geared to. We're, you know, if I wanted to go out there and shoot hours and hours of video talking stupid, I could. But that takes away from our main core base our main core has always been radio listeners so when you see us reading the articles that's just to show you hey this is what we're doing on the air again i can go out there shoot fancy videos to you know spend a day editing the damn things i hate editing videos instead of doing the work that we do but again you know you made it when you got haters out there. You got to love them, them little tinkerbells. You got to love them. And I seen that one station. <laughs> I was like, dude, at least show your damn face, man. Stop being a scary little punk. You're a scary little punk. <laughs> it's just like them trolls that were up on uh, some of the comments. And they're like, well, that wasn't uh, that group in South Dakota. Yeah, it was. They had their flag up there. I don't care what any cop says or what any newspaper said. They had the flag. That means they are them. You guys do know that's an internet-based group, right? They work for, through uh, the different Facebook groups, Twitter accounts, and all that stuff, right? So it's not an organization. Basically, I would say it. It's a pop-up type of deal to make you understand, I guess. So, we're going to go into the news. That was my opening. Hopefully, I uh, cleared up some stuff for you. Uh, we're going to talk about some Harley Davidson stuff. This one article coming up has me fuming. Fuming. Wait till you see that. Then we're going to go into some other unique news, man. But at about this point is when we go to the three songs. So, you know. But let's get to the bike. Okay, let's get into some biker news. Reuters. Harley's activist investor backs business reboot strategy. That is what Harley Davidson has now come down to. Their investors are telling them what they should be doing and how they should be running the company. I always felt micromanaging is going to do nothing but hurt a company. And boy has it. You know, Matt Levetich, he was kicked to the curve because the investors didn't like the way he was bringing the company. And, you know, I've been hard on Matt. But at least he had the vision to try to change the model line. The models? Come on, man. Year after year, all it was was the same freaking stuff, but they changed this or that a little bit. And boom, they call it the 2020 model, where they could have just carried the model over from the previous year and, you know, save you some money. Uh, but at least he had that vision. 
You know, he came up with uh, bikes that Harley Davidson would have never got into. Like, I'm waiting for the Pan American to come out. I'm really excited to, you know, see the Pan American. I want to go test ride it. I want to actually do a vlog on it because the off-road stuff is hot right now with the younger kids. And I want to see what it's all about. I actually might go uh, test out an African twin, check it out. Uh, but he had that vision to say, you know what, we have to do, you know, different models to get these kids in here. Because they don't like just the cruiser bikes. They don't like the heavy cruisers. Harley Davidson has a 50% uh, share in the United States on heavy cruisers. That's only one category. And those sales does not make up the majority of motorcycle sales. That's 1,200 and CC and under that makes up that. And Harley Davidson is nowhere king of that freaking uh, sector. So it's kind of like, damn, man, you know, you can have an activist investor say, hey, this is the way we want the company to go. And that's one of the big reasons why I don't like investing in the stock market is because the investors are the ones telling you what direction they want the company to go in. And you don't have people taking risk like Matt Levetich did to change things. And you got to give it a you know a few more years. When that guy came in, Harley was already on the downslide in 2014. It hasn't made a profit. What was it last quarter? We talked about 92 million dollar loss. Anyway, Chicago, an activist investor who shook up Harley Davidson Inc. earlier this year, said he is impressed with the changes initiated by new chief executive Jacques Zitz. To turn around the 117 year old motorcycle company I don't you know what I looked at the rewire plan uh, what I seen there was they want to make less motorcycles available on the floor this way they can counter the used Harley market and then they want to focus on the higher end bikes selling them that isn't their core base so I don't see this rewire plan working Impala Asset Management, a $2.4 billion hedge fund, yeah, that's what your business needs is a hedge fund in it, pushed uh, for the ouster of his predecessor, Matt Levetich, in January. Months later, it tried to install two directors on Harley's boards, yeah, now they want two more directors, asking for operational fixes to recover its market share in the United States, Europe, and Japan. Like I said earlier, their market share is only 50% in the United States for big uh, cruisers. Everything else, it's a joke. And I just talked about the 750. They want to nix that overseas. Are they going to nix it here in the United States, a 750? Where they have to be in competition with Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki in that CC range. That would be disastrous if you ask me. I don't think they've promoted the 550 and the 750 all that good. I think they've been lackluster in that. I think uh, their price point's out of line for them, but they're always out of line with price points, man. Quote, for the first time in five to six years, the company is on the right track again. Man, I don't know what track you're talking about, Bob Bishop, the founder and chief investment officer at Impala. You're crazy, man. This rewire plan ain't going to get the company back on track. You got dealerships closing all over the United States, and it's not from COVID. Nobody wants to buy the damn bike. Harley Davidson was one of the only manufacturers that didn't make any money through this crisis. Everybody else did because everybody wanted to get out of the house, so they went and bought a bike. But they didn't buy your bike. Zietz, who took the reins in February, is rebooting Harley's uh, business by shifting the focus back to big bikes. So you're going back to the big bikes. <laughs> the ones the next generation of riders don't want. Makes sense, dummy. Traditional markets like the United States and Europe and older and wealthier customers. Older and wealthier customers. Okay. 
what happens when you know because generation z right now is getting involved in the cycling community and they're on rockets they're on off-road bikes so you're telling me you're skirting that uh, to the side and going for the big bike market where you're not going to get new freaking riders really makes sense the new strategy echoes some of the changes Impala has been pushing for. Bishop said Harley should not pursue sales growth at any cost. Instead, it needs to market itself like Ferrari and become an aspirational brand. You heard that right here on this show. They should market itself as a Ferrari. Here's the problem with that. Harley-Davidson is no Ferrari. They are trailing in technological stuff. The ride is bumpier than hell. That's why people ask me, and I get uh, shit for this. Which is your favorite bike out of the two you own? I own a Fat Boy, and I own a Boulevard. My favorite bike's the Boulevard. I love that C90. Why? Because I'm not beat up after I get off of it. It's a smooth ride. It cruises. And it don't got all the damn vibration. Yeah, I know that's part of Harley's brand. But how the hell are you going to say you want to become an aspirational brand? And you want to go to the high end? So you're going to be pushing CVOs? But nobody wants to afford but rich people. Yeah, this makes real sense, you morons. Bishop does not buy the argument that Harley sales in the United States, its biggest market, are suffering because of the aging customer base. Well, okay, are you bringing in the younger crowd? Doesn't buy the argument. He's a hedge fund manager. He ain't in the motorcycles. The dude probably hasn't even ridden one. He dubbed that as an excuse. Oh, really? to cover the company's shrinking market share. No, it's your prices that you're going to want to become a Ferrari now. Wait until you see your market share at that point. Citing the evidence from Europe and Japan where industry sales of motorcycles have been growing despite older demographics. What he don't tell you is two wheels over in Europe, Japan, look at the population centers. That's what a lot of people ride. They ride the scooters, they ride freaking two wheel. And if you go to India, why do you think Royal Enfield is one of the biggest bikes that are sold? 350 to 550 cc's. They're not getting the big bikes over there. They don't want all the freaking 1450s. No. They want something small to get around with because of the population centers. Well, when you build up the brand, you'll sell more bikes, he said. Get rid of this ideal that the demographics is killing them. Dude, you guys are going to listen to this guy and build in your company? Impala bought 1.2 million Harley shares in quarter through June, increasing its stake to 2.52% from 1.73 in the first of the quarter. So they only got a 2.52% stake in this company. You're blowing off all the rest of your investors and jerking this guy off because he's got 2% uh, percent of sales. He's going to freaking kill your company. It also expects an agreement with Harley next month on the new independent board member uh, Bishop said as part of the agreement reached in March to settle a board fight under this uh, CEO Harley has tightened uh, supplies and cut production driving prices up for pre-owned bikes well only in your freaking dealerships it ain't driving up the price on the street actually right now Harley's ain't holding their value I didn't get more from my boulevard than I can the Harley. So how is that driving up bikes on the pre-owned uh, market? Again, only on your freaking uh, dealership floor is all it's doing. 
which used to be a drag on new motorcycle sales. It plans to reduce product portfolio and exit lower volume markets, though the company has not specified which ones. Where are all you cheerleaders after hearing this? They want to market it as a Ferrari raise prices. I really want to hear it. Where are you guys? Bishop says models selling below 300 units a year in markets like India and Latin America that have been a cash grain could face the axe. That's because Royal Enfield's kicking your ass in India and Latin America. They're killing you guys because your prices suck over there. And Royal Enfield's some badass bikes. You can't compete. That's why you're pulling out. But India has a huge population. Four or five times probably than in the United States. And you're pulling out of that market? You're crazy. Uh, Harley declined to comment. Robin Farley, an analyst at UBS, reckons the new strategy could shore up Harley's earnings by saving cost, but would not fix its demand problem. Hopes of higher profit, however, have driven up the company's share about 50%. Uh, that, uh, you know what? Guaranteed over the next year, that stock price is going to hit 14 or 15 bucks. Guaranteed it's going to fall. Uh, analysts surveyed by Renative on average uh, expected, uh, expected uh, adjusted earnings of 248 a share. Uh, they say this, or Bishop says, this is fundamentally a strong company that just lost its way. Harley. You know what, the AMF, man. You know what, somebody in a private capacity needs to buy this damn company because I don't think it'll be around in 10 years with it being ran like this. I don't know. Let me guy, let me know what you guys think. Uh, next, a WKRG, a Alabama woman dies in motorcycle tr crash on the Dragon. Yes, the Dragon. Everybody uh, knows that one. Uh Maryville, Tennessee, a 44-year-old woman riding a motorcycle trike was killed Wednesday in a crash on the portion of U.S. Highway 129 in Blount County, known as the Dragon. Uh, the county sheriff's office said Wednesday that an Alabama woman had died and a passenger was injured in a motorcycle accident on the Dragon. Uh, it's a popular scenic roadway in East Tennessee. Whoever's rode it, man, put in the comments. According to the BCSO, Lisa Renee Green, 44, of Clannon, Alabama, was pronounced dead at the scene by medical personnel with AM, our ambulance service. A passenger on the motorcycle, Amos Talent, 42, of Eli, uh, what LJ uh, Georgia, was taken by Rural Metro Ambulance Service to Blount Memorial, where he is receiving treatment. Uh, the invis what is it? Uh, the initial investigation revealed that uh, let's see here. After 3 p.m., uh, the deputies responded to mile marker 4.3 on the stretch uh, known as the Dragon to a motorcycle accident. Uh, they determined that Green was traveling north on the Dragon as she negotiated a right turn. She looked away from the road briefly and traveled into a ditch. On the left side of the roadway, as the trike came out of the dish, she overcorrected, causing the trike to turn over on the runway. Our thoughts are with uh, the victim's uh, family on that one. Sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. Now, going up to Newsweek, Bikers for Trump is in the news. They are surrounding the DNC security perimeter in Milwaukee by Jeffrey Martin. Members of the Bikers for Trump organization gathered outside the location of the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. Hmm. According to the Bikers for Trump website, uh, the group is a grassroots organization of patriotic citizen crusaders who are committed to supporting President Trump's agenda and upholding American liberties. Although much of the 2020 DNC is being held virtually and using pre-taped speeches from Democrats. Oh my God, is it a... Uh, you know, I could not freaking watch any of it. It was... I was cringing. The bikers uh, for Trump can be heard in the video posted online uh, announcing their approval of uh, Trump's uh, re-election. Let's see here. here. Right now, they're just showing a bunch of the bikes running around uh, Milwaukee. 
and I guess they're gathering and stuff. Yeah, that's about what it is. Uh, let's see here. An interview with Fox News on Wednesday, Bikers for Trump uh, founder Chris Cox said his organization was not in the Milwaukee to poke the bear, but we're here to keep an eye on things. Why not poke the bear? It's a lot more funnier. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, they're up there in Milwaukee right now. Uh, going to around town, around ptown.com, a family of a man killed by a Whiteside County deputy is receiving their settlement. Uh, the family of a Morrison man who was killed when a Whiteside County deputy, Jeffrey A. Wonderlick, turned his squad car in front of the man's motorcycle has agreed to a $3.6 million settlement and apology in a statement. Released by the family attorney Trent Bush with Ward, William J. R. G. Danhoff, 58, was on his way home from work in Dixon, Illinois, on the evening of July 25th to 2016, when he approached the intersection of Route 30 and Emerson Road. Wonderlick, traveling eastbound on Route 30 in his Mark squad car, was en route to Sterling to receive Sterling uh, relieve a Sterling police in a missing person search contrary to the sheriff's general orders wonderlick never activated his emergency lights or siren uh then what happened is uh he entered the center turn lane on route 30 crossed the solid double lines then crossed into the westbound lane uh so uh he died in a motorcycle accident uh he is still employed by the department uh, he, uh, Damhoff, leaves behind his wife, Lynette, three children and spouses, and nine grandchildren. Good for you guys getting what you deserve. Uh, riding for the die out of Biker Dad, Bikers lead uh, procession for Illinois motorcyclists who died in a crash. Uh, there we go. Let's take a listen. Motorcycle. We're in for a surprise procession. Well, hundreds of bikers from Billion County led the way for Sean Dye. His family says he was a rider. His friends helped organize the Ride for Dye events. Danville police say Dye died after colliding with a car that was trying to cross an intersection right in front of him. My God. You know what? I hate that stuff, man. You're, tr you're making a turn and they just jump right in front of you. Uh, but anyway, this is for uh, Danville Sean uh, Die, who died with a car crash into his motorcycle on August 9th. Uh, let's go to Corey Graff's Hall of Shame. Wall of Shame, man. I keep on saying Hall of Shame, but it's Wall of Shame. Uh, by Brittany M. Hughes. An officer at a New Jersey detention center has been suspended after he reportedly made racial insensitive comments about the shooting death of a five-year-old Cannon Hinnant, a white boy who was gunned down in broad daylight by a black over a week ago. We've talked about this. According to this officer, Officer Rome Smith, you piece of crap, who worked at a juvenile detention center in Cumberland County, wrote on social media that uh, the kid should have ducked, the five-year-old. Should have ducked. When 25-year-old Darius Sessions shot him in the head at point-blank range. You wonder why there's racism in this country? All you have to do is look at this story. According to this, uh, why y'all always trying to sneak diss and discredit a black person being killed innocently by police? Well, then my response is going to be, you know, there's more whites uh, killed by cops than there are blacks. But, you know, 90% of black, uh, you know guys that get killed are by other blacks so maybe one of these days you'll start caring about your own lives and maybe then we might too at least i might uh blame cannon's parents for not watching them so i guess you can't have your kid in front of your house anymore uh then they got the screenshot uh he should have ducked f-o-h you always trying to sneak this and discredit a black person being killed innocently by the police uh yeah <laughs> cumberland county spokesman jody heretta told nbc news that smith was a county employee and that he's been suspended over his post which the county determined was shockingly insensitive and racist in tone fire his ass let's see if you do it let's see if you do it we will not tolerate county employees using social media to broadcast hateful messages 
uh, Cumberland uh, County Freeholder Director Joseph Dorella said, uh, NBC News reported, this is not who we are and we intend to pursue the strongest available action. Fire his ass. I want to see it. Fire him. God, man. And again, you guys wonder why there's racism? This is Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. All right, welcome back to the show, guys. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this type of format. Uh, but my final thoughts. Why the hell shouldn't we be pissed at that last story? Why? Can any freaking leftist or anybody that is African American blame us for not being pissed at what that dude just said? And my question is, why in the hell isn't he fired? It would already happen to a white one already. So why isn't he fired? What he said was disgraceful. And I've been seeing that all over Facebook. This is a five-year-old little kid that was shot by this dude. But hey, he's got a group up there, you know, GoFundMe page. which And do you know Floyd, he, he, they already got $25 million for him. It's funny, when you watch the whole video, you see what he was about with his jacket and stuff like that. Yeah, it paints a very different story. That's why you're not hearing about him anymore. Oh, hell no. Let's cover this up. It's led to all these problems around the United States, but this is what the guy was about. And you get so sick and tired of hearing, uh, well, you know, we were innocent and they got gunned down. Like I said, more whites are killed by cops than blacks. That's just a fact. And that's something you can't dispute. But it don't fit the media's narrative. For, for somebody to say this about a little baby five years old, you're a despicable human being. A despicable human being. And anybody that agrees with you, they're schlucks and they're despicable. And that one story right there is why racism exists in this country there's no two ways about it you know I get it it's tribal human nature is tribal and a lot's being blown up by the media to make one side hate the other I get it because people are too stupid to see through it but for something to be said like that that's unexcusable and if it was a white that said it, the dude would be fired in a heartbeat. Why talk about it? You see what the dude said. That's the way the guy thinks. How's he going to perform his duties? He ain't. It's always funny. You can have black pride, brown pride, but not white pride, for God's sakes. Oh, no, you're a racist at that point. I say to hell with you. The hell with you. And I hope this dude gets it from the, <laughs> the pecker woods and the friggin' joint, man. I'm hoping. I'm hoping who hurt that boy. Anyway, get something better. Uh, Harley Davidson. Now, I get it. I bang on him all the time. It's because I want to see him do better. I want to see the numbers go up. I'm not an investor of Harley Davidson. And you can see why I'm not an investor. You had this hedge fund manager say Harley had to do this, do that, do that. They only own a 2% uh, stake in the damn company. I'm going to do a little research to find out who the majority owners are. You know, I'm not just talking about the board, you know, the Harley itself, but I'm talking about who the other investors are. Because Harley Davidson should sell itself as a Ferrari? And only go after the top end bikes? You just blew it. Blew it. Who the hell? I don't want no Ferrari. I'm a biker. I sit there and I freaking uh, 
commingle with hard-working people, steel workers, iron workers, coal miners. I don't want to go out there and freaking uh, rub elbows with a bunch of rich people. They don't understand this lifestyle. They're nothing but motorcycle enthusiasts. And again, there's no problem being a motorcycle enthusiast. But when you're going to base your whole concept on uh, we should bill ourselves as a Ferrari, you're insane. You're going to tear down this company. And that little gamut that you're going to try to do with uh, raising prices on uh, uh, used inventory, you're stupid, man. Because it's not the old days when a Harley was a must. It's not like that anymore. People don't think that way. That way of thinking is gone. As long, you know, the thinking that it is now, as long as you're on two wheels, it's awesome. Why do you think I only have the one Harley and I own a freaking Boulevard? And my Boulevard's a better bike. You know, well, I'm going to have the haters say, Oh, no, 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 Harley's all this. Yeah? While you're sitting there freaking stroking this company, they're over there bending you over, putting your pants to your ankles, man. Because this is what they truly think. See, a lot of people will never know this kind of information because they're not into uh, the investor stuff. This only shows up in investor papers. You're not going to see this anywhere else. And a lot of bikers won't go to these type of publications. This is what they really think of you. This is where they're bringing the company. And this investor says, well, you know, this is just an excuse that the older riders are aging out. They're the only ones buying the damn big bikes. I like you know what I'm actually gonna go see the sales breakdown by demographic and I can guarantee you it's 40 and over for the bigger bikes sure you got you know the 20s and 30s might be buying the sportsters and stuff and even them prices are getting stupid so they're turning to, you can get well the C90 for example 1450 cc's can get a good one for five six thousand dollars badass bike outlast the harley any day of the year water cooled the whole nine yards try to get the same equivalent with harley you're looking at twenty thousand dollars you're already priced screwed up but now you're gonna go with the cvo market you're freaking insane man this is the way you think harley davidson's turning around its company not given enough freaking uh, inventory. You know, I wish I can get an actual dealer to talk on air because they're so damn scared of the Harley Davidson company that they'll lose something. Or I wish I'd get them on and speak about this plan. Honestly, though, not trying to push the company line. This is what we got to do uh, to get this. No, I want an honest opinion. Not this crap. But they won't do it because there's too much money involved. And you're seeing a lot of dealerships go under right now. I would have never thought I'd see the day when I seen so many damn dealerships going underwater. Never. But it is happening now. While, again, I said, hey, what's going on here? Honda, Yamaha, all them, Indian... They're all freaking going strong. They're making some damn good sales during this COVID thing. And Harley Davidson loses $92 million. I just, I think they're lost as a company. And again, as much as I banged on uh, Matt, at least he had some freaking vision. Like I said on uh, the yesterday segment, I think Harley Davidson needs to get into the sport bike market. And I'm not talking about V-Twin, man. You got to come up with a new engine design. A new one. You know, you got to get into the sports bike market. And I'm not talking about a Buell or I'm talking about a freaking rocket. You got to get into a rocket market. You got to kind of break into it. A lot of your designs that were supposed to come out, you took from Triumph and other 
uh, manufacturers. I seen that the style. The style you most resembled was the Triumph. And then you're talking about pulling out of uh, India and Japan? Are you freaking serious? The market that's over there. Now I get it. You overprice your damn bikes because you want them to be Ferraris. And, you know, people in India and Japan just ain't going to go for that. But look at the infield's uh, success over there. Come up with a damn bike that actually is going to compete. That's the problem when these hedge fund managers get in charge of a company. They just destroy them. What, what's their goal? To go in there and get the market share, then break up the company? A hostile takeover. Is that what their freaking game is? Because you're too stupid not to see what the hell they're doing to your company? Harley Davidson was made on the back of working men and women. They weren't, it was not made on the backs of rich people, man. That's just my freaking thoughts on that. Uh, what do you guys think about Harley Davidson uh, following the plan of this hedge fund investor? Personally, I think he's going to ruin the damn company. That's just me. Don't forget to go uh, listen to us on our major platforms iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all the good stuff, man. And uh, thanks again for the music, Ripple River. I love the intro uh, and the outro. It's good stuff, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, uh, we got Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. With that, let me know your thoughts. Pound rock on, baby. Pound rock on. I I'll talk to you guys Bad later. Ciao. So long. Get your hat. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!